So welcome to the lecture number seven of the deep learning course. In this session, we are going to talk about the single neuron. So till now we have seen the perceptron. However, we would uh, build the theory based on the perceptron only. So uh, there is a small overlap between the neuron and perceptron. We are going to see that uh, what is that. In this particular session, we are also going to see the historical perspective of the uh, neural networks that how the things had evolved so that you get a better understanding that uh, how the people have worked and uh, in what scenario we are right now and what are the important components that actually brought these things uh, to the feasibility. So let us start our discussion by just giving you the idea of the biological neuron. I'm not much expert at that, but uh, let me try to uh, give you some perspective that is useful from the computer science perspective. So uh, what happens that uh, this is the this is a diagram of a neural network and uh, some somebody has only just drawn it's not the real image. So here you can see that there is one part, one part that is called the nucleus. And in the nucleus, there are some, you can see that tree-like structures where there are some connecting things are coming. They are called dendrites. Okay. And then, uh, then there is a long tail. And you can think about that. Uh, it is called the axon. And at the, at the end, the axon are going to get the terminated. So if you, uh, if you look closely, this dendrites, so dendrites are some structures like this. Okay, dendrites are the structures like this. So they are the structures like this. And axon, at the at the end of axon, if you just see, try to see, they are something like this. Okay, so some structures like this. Okay. So what happens, they actually fit into this particular area this they actually fit into this particular area okay so what happens that if and you and you know that uh, from the, i'm talking about when i'm talking about the axons this is this particular part so there would be some somewhere there will be nucleus and from the nucleus some signal is going to pass to the axon so this is the another since you know that you are seeing the dendrites so there is another nucleon nucleus at this particular site and then there are connections and everything so if if there is some signal that is going to be originated at this particular place it is going to be sent at this particular place then how it crosses the boundary so people talk about that uh, looks like that there is some there are some nuclei uh, there are some uh, particles which actually pass from here to here and this is called the synopsis connections. This is called the synopsis connection. So there is a synopsis connection. And uh, using because of this synopsis connection, it is possible that they can send some signals from one place to another. This, uh, this synopsis uh, connection is very important uh, in the terms that uh, they actually give the idea that they are different. OK. So finding out that actually there is a synopsis connection between the two neurons is very important. That says that uh, that one there is there is one part that is uh, and there is another part and they are connected. So th there are two different parts which are going to be get connected. That's why we can think that uh, one particular cell neuron cell is going to act as a single unit that whatever he is going to do. Make sense? So, so this is uh, this is a kind of uh, broad uh, and uh, brief introduction of this thing. So we have understood that uh, there are some cells, there are uh, there are some uh, cells, and uh, let me just there are some cell, there are some axon, and uh, axon is the line that actually the wire, the root that actually connects. Then there are synapses connections. Then there are molecules. These molecules are transferred from one from one uh, connection to another to make the to take the uh, signal forward. Then there are dendrites that are actually uh, that are actually connectors, and uh, these are there are input connectors. And uh, this is the dendrites. This is the axon, 
and uh, if you try to understand that why how much uh, complex our system is so if you focus on the humans so roughly there are 10 to the power 11 neurons in our head and uh, they they are densely connected and therefore one one neuron is on an average 10 to connected to 10 to the power four other neurons so see that how complex it is 10000 okay it is one thing is connected to 10000 other things and the switching time however the switching time of those things are less so 10 to the power minus 3 if you want to send the signals it is going to take 10 to the power minus 3 second so when i'm telling that uh, switching time is less the, then at that time i'm talking about in terms of the modern computer system you know that uh, they have 10 to the power minus 6 second uh, uh, 10 to the power minus 9 second uh, i think the better ones are like that so they their switching time is very fast so you can see that uh, if you compare the human brain with respect to the capability that we actually have in terms of the hardware that we have, so you can think that my hardware is 1,000 times faster than my brain. But my brain is better. Why brain is better? Because you can see here that still now we have not made any system that has these many number of neurons and these many number of connections. So that's why, uh, that's why the systems are not capable to be around the human but very recent uh, very uh, soon you would see in our discussion that uh, even with the smaller number of connections and sim smaller number of uh, weights our systems that actually deep learning based system that we have developed they are surpassing to the human capabilities in a specific task so if you just focus on a specific talk uh, task then you would be uh, amazed to understand that now the uh, capabilities of uh, the the neural net network based systems are actually greater than the hours. So when uh, whenever somebody talks about the neural network, it is actually biologically motivated learning model where we think that uh, the in the same way the as the human brain works, I'm going to model the things into the computer and uh, I'm going to build the system into the similar way. So Ultimately, this is going to happen whenever the people uh, want to develop something and they and they find it is very difficult. So they do human uh, analysis, behavior analysis or uh, human uh, physiological analysis. And then they always try to develop something that is actually that is happening into the neural into the nature. So you have also seen that there are multiple uh, multiple such uh, understandings that what is the even with respect to the physics, uh, if you want to find out that how, how two charged particles are getting attracted or repulsed and using those kind of theories also people make uh, the systems that uh, that are very uh, active these days and they are very efficient effective in into the domain so this is not new thing that wherever the person want to build something they find they are stuck they take the help of nature and in terms of the in the um, artificial intelligence definitely people have to link because uh, people will have to see around the humans and then they can go ahead with that so uh, broadly if you want to understand that from where it is started so there was a study by McCulloch, and they actually try to uh, model that how the neural neurons actually works so they have provided a kind of models that uh, that uh, looks like that uh, there are some some other things and they are going to be connected and then there is some sum has been found and then it gets activated so this kind of first model that was actually technically uh, very similar to what we these days use was given by McCulloch around 1943 it was long back however this is not the same thing because now we know that there there is a there is a difference that uh, there is a weights also he was not talking about the weights at that particular time he was only thinking that uh, something has been going over here and something coming out and that's why uh, and 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 that kind of um, computation structures that we are going to have so um, this is this was the first attempt that the, the technical attempt that the people has actually modeled those kind of things after very long 19 around 1959 the first system that was developed using the neurons uh, this kind of architecture and this uh, system was named as medline this was an adaptive filter that can eliminate the echoes on the phone lines at that time you know that whenever we are talking so uh, if the voice is uh, uh, 
uh, loud enough then um, at that place where i my voice you are listening at that time uh, at that place that my voice would come back to me also so this is the echo so how can we remove that so adaptive kind of filter was developed at that particular time and this was the first application that uh, that uh, was developed using neural network based systems uh, however the popularity of the neural network diminished around 90s and uh, people were thinking that it is not going to work anymore and uh, there is not much uh, thing into this but due to now with this due to advance advancement into the processing power and availability of the large data and the software tools people are actually again started using and it becomes state of the art so all these things we are going to see into the next slide where i'm going to briefly talk about uh, the history of uh, neural network so this is an interesting story okay so uh, you you must understand these particular things and i have brought very brief history uh, history only and only i have tried to put uh, only those things which are actually important so let us uh, un try to understand that how people were uh, actually started working into this particular area means neural network based i am just focusing on the neuron from the neural network based perspective where the person are using neurons so it was long back when the people started talking about it around 1872 people have given the uh, the theory that looks like that in our brain there is a some uh, connections and and uh, there is a tree like structure so it was long back people because earlier people are not knowing that what is there into the brain so first time when the people have understood and they have proposed something so this was around 9, 1872 when the people has actually come up with the idea that looks like that there are uh, various small units they are connected and there is some tree like structures and uh, and all these so the modeling first time biological modeling was done by this and as i told you that around 1943 first time somebody uh, macolock actually was able to tell that what is the mathematical model of this how can we mathematically model it so he told that uh, that uh, as as i mentioned that he told that looks like that uh, other things are connected and there is some cell and this cell actually find out the summation and uh, find out that how much uh, is going to be the input and then it is going to give the activation so this was the idea of the macolung and let me tell you that uh, this 1940 what is the 1943 1943 this time is very very crucial time you know that first computer first generation first generation computer was available around 1945 and this was these were the biggest big computers okay at that time very big computers were there and um, one room size um, large computers were at that time were there so even the computers were very expensive machines at that particular time and we were thinking that it is not going to be available for the general people it is for the uh, corporate kind of uh, environment uh, processing only those kind of processing would be needed so 1945 you can think that it is it is too old thing okay the, where at that time even the computer was not mature enough the people were trying to model that what is there but the question arises that if you come up this kind of model then how can you train this okay with what how can you find out that what should be input what should be output so how can you develop a relationship so at that time around 1947 1947 donald hub actually had given the idea of a habian learning and uh, by this actually you got the and idea that now you can train this these things and you can build some kind something related to that so the idea was this there his idea was this that you know that if uh, if uh, not only single neurons are there if multiple neurons are there so at that time people are were also not thinking that it is going to be into the uh, layered manner so they, if they are connected and you think that you want to for example some uh, some place you want to activate for example if you want to activate some of the connections using some of the input let's assume that x1 and x2 are inputs so and you want to activate this particular neuron okay you want to activate for example this particular new one neuron so what is the way so you you find out that looks like that this is the way in this way if the things are coming then it would be it would be activated so what uh, habian learning suggested that the way uh, the weights related to this particular area means they they are actually increased and he was not talking about actually a weights directly he was telling the strength so strength of these connections are need to be uh, need to be increased so therefore it would be more uh, more 
prominent into giving something so this kind of understanding when he have introduced then it become possible that now you can train the these kind of systems so this was an interesting back through so people started working into this particular area so you you have now you have a structure now what you have you have a structure and now you can uh, in, increase the connection strength and by this you can uh, start learning then very interesting uh, understanding came that was called the cybernetics around 19 around 1948 and cybernetics actually says that uh, if you want to do something you need not to directly means apply the same kind of um uh, you need not to do everything only small changes into something may reflect to something something larger so you know that you can you can recall that this is the same time when uh, we were actually having the transistors so in the transistor you know that if there is a p uh, p and n p uh, p n p transistor so you know that there is some kind of biasing and using the biasing if you change something over here at the output i'm not sure about this correct diagram but at the output this would be shown as in, into the amplified manner okay if you change something you, your output is going to change a larger so the same idea was there into the cybernetic it says that uh, if you want to perform some operation you not to do the complete if you want to do this much change you need not to do this much change only small inter indication would be sufficient to go over there okay what does it mean that there is some weight that is actually multiplied to the all these things and if it, that weight is multiplied then the things becomes uh, larger so this weight multiplication concept was very important and therefore in our uh, in our circuit the people has says that there are some weights okay with the input there are some weights and with respect to that uh, i am going to build this kind of system so this was the first time that whatever that uh, the, you know that these kind of no, models we are using these days was a very similar kind of architecture was actually proposed at that particular time understood after that uh, the actual perceptron model has come that actually uh, came around 1954 you remember this time 1954 too old and you know that i i told you that around the first generation computer came around 19 1945 and the second generation came 1955 what is the difference these were the vacuum tube based systems and now at that time uh, these were the transistor based system has come so the perceptron was actually a, um, proposed around that and people and this is a very interesting um, interesting time let me tell you what happens that at that time he uh, he actually told that what is the perceptron so so the model that we are actually seeing that uh, weighted summation that after that uh, thresholding and after that the output that we are going to get the same thing that we have studied in the last class so he, this was the proposal by him and the very important thing is this that at the time it becomes very big news and uh, at that time uh, very big news uh, ch channels actually started saying that now we have developed something by use of which we can develop the system that can talk to the person okay that can see computer vision and nlp all these things was written in that particular uh, article so it was a very old article and people actually generally bring this article to us and show us that see that in in around 1954 people were thinking that we can talk and even nowadays we cannot talk directly so few years back i think 2 3 years back we uh, we we are now exposed to the alexa but you can you can know that alexa is also very at the premature state and he can he have very less understanding of the things that you are, you are there so there is a a specific kind of thing that you can request from the alexa and uh, all other uh, these kind of systems but at that time when the people were thinking that we can uh, make it so it was very far away thing but but in the article people had mentioned means the people were talking about that we are going to make those systems which are going to do and they were not thinking that it would take too much time okay they were thinking that it is, these things are very easy pretty easy because new new you can think that um, this is the time when the people have developed the computers at that time people were thinking that we have we gained lot of uh, power but nowadays we can analyze that okay it is not that easy it was not that easy and it took so much time so uh, this was the time when actually we understood that what is the perceptron what is the actual model and after that uh, as i told you that uh, medline was the first uh, first thing that came to us and uh, this was the first item that we have actually built using these kind of models we build the medline any questions if you have please please ask in between okay yeah 
so uh, then uh, within after some year around 1962 there was a very interesting um, experiment by hubble and wiesel they actually wanted to understand the computer vision uh, human vision system and to understand this they have actually deployed a kind of um, sensors to the to uh, sensor inside a cat and try to understand that what happens when that but those uh, neurons that are there they fire so they try to show various images to the cat and uh, try to understand that uh, what happens if the cat is there and i am going to show different kind of images what happens to the cat so they have uh, they have shown for example they have shown the images of mouse they have images of milk images of uh, chair so they were thinking that when I would show the image of mouse at that time, the 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 cat the the cat would actually uh, the neurons would fire, but actually neurons were not firing at that particular time. They were very surprised to see that, but they have observed that when they were changing the one image to another image, at that time neurons were firing. So by this they they actually drawn a very interesting uh, observation that uh, our our vision system is not very much active when the things are stable when the things are changing at that time it is important and and they have also uh, come up with the idea that uh, actually corners are important when there are corners and corners are moving so those points are more important as compared to the complete images so these things are actually utilized at the later point of time that when you want to recognize a particular item you need not to recognize using that particular complete structure In instead you just see that what are the uh, what are the corners what are the lines and based on the corners and lines you can understand that what that particular object is very interesting experiment in terms of the in terms of the computer vision and then the they very interesting paper came around 1969 it was a minsky and actually they actually tried to bring that what are the limitation of this perceptron so perceptron was actually introduced and now the people started working with that and they have actually find out that there is a limitation there are few limitation with this kind of structure so uh, right now if i don't tell you and ask you that uh, because you know the perceptron you know, in the last class we have discussed so if i ask you that can you t give me that what is the limitation of the perceptron can you give me so it's very easy to tell that in the last class also i have uh, emphasized on this particular point the perceptron is a linear decision boundary what is that linear decision boundary so what is very fancy on that only linear decision boundary if the items are linearly separated then only you can apply so this was uh, this was given into the paper that uh, perceptron is a linear decision boundary it can only do linear kind of thing so however this paper was mi misinterpreted so he have given the limitation that this is a limitation actually he have also told this uh, this thing that single perceptron cannot do the much thing but if you use multiple perceptron multiple layers of the perceptron then you can solve the problem actually his paper was around that but the people have actually interpreted in that way that okay they are now the, they have limitation and they are not very good and therefore it was a big problem for the things people were actually not working on that and therefore for very long period of time there are very less work into this particular domain and they were thinking that okay it is not very useful concept have you saw this a lot of uh, a, a lot of um, work that people were doing. However, I just missed this particular part that Frank Rosenberg into the just, I think with, after around the same time, I think I have put it wrong over here. He have he have actually given the idea. I think it was, it should be before that 1965. So before that he have given this idea that you can use the, how can you utilize the multi-layer of the perceptron? But people are not thinking about that. How can put them into the multiple layers? So if you put them into the multi-layer, then then the linear boundary get more power and it can do more powerful things. But at the time when the person has seen that it has limitation, so it becomes a big big issue, and the people started not talking about this. And this is the time that when people actually thought that this idea is very bad and we should abandon this. Okay. Okay, I would do that. I would change this thing. Okay. Uh, one more problem was there that, uh, however, the concept of multi-layer perceptron was there, but people were having the issue with the uh, with the concept of multi-layer perceptron was there, but uh, but people were not able to understand that if the multiple layers of perceptron are 
multiple layers are there perceptrons are there how to find out the value because it becomes very difficult to find out because so many parameter fully connected and so many values are there how to find out these values so finding out these values become a kind of a challenge and uh, therefore it was very difficult to go ahead with this at that time a new algorithm that was actually introduced was back propagation and this was the similar kind of uh, this is not a very big thing back propagation but actually people had not applied in this particular area and the idea is very simple that into comp in, into the optimization you know that using the gradient okay back propagation we would see uh, in the later classes it is not a big idea it is only telling that if you want to optimize something you can utilize the gradients so how to utilize gradient with respect to the large model uh, large connections was a uh, was a small problem and that was solved around 1986 it was an interesting time when the people have actually come up with this idea and now look what they have achieved that big network circuit because they can make the network circuit it was the it was into there how to find out the right parameter for the big network circuit was available so they started building the system on that okay again people started working lot of things and they were telling that okay the whatever been uh, said over here we can achieve that okay then comes the universal approximation theorem that is a very interesting uh, theorem that says that if you have a function for example very interesting thing i am going to tell if there is a function okay and uh, i I, I find I give the input to this particular function. I get the output. I provide some input. I get some output. So I am telling that I can equivalently make a network uh, neural network circuits circuit also, and it is also going to give the same output for the same input. It is going to give the same output. However, you know that since this is a different circuit, so there uh, maybe my output is out uh, o dash. here the output is o but my circuit's output is o dash but the difference between o minus o dash can be made arbitrarily small because if i add more things over here my network become powerful and therefore the space is going to be smaller and smaller this difference is going to be the smaller and smaller and that i can always do means whatever function you can come i can build a approximator around that what does it mean that this particular circuit can be any function very interesting function very interesting work that came around 1989 universal approximation theorem so uh, again uh, a lot of hope that any kind of function for example we understand that if we want to do the visual understanding or the uh, or the natural language processing they all are functions given something we want to find out the output and what does it mean that my my network circuit is going to do the very similar kind of task i am very happy i can do again the same kind of things so lot of work has happened around 1997 the concept of lstm nowadays you see lot more places where the people are applying the lstm it was proposed around 1997 it was proposed around 1998 lee kun has proposed a convnet and uh, that was actually uh, th that there was a problem there is a data set of called the amnest you may be heard about this you may have heard about this let me tell you what that particular data was you know that na there is a postcard so on the postcard people uh, there is a place where people write pin okay pin um, and uh, pin is something eight digit or four digit whatever it it be so somebody has scanned all these places and he has cut on this particular thing and pre pre prepare a database where every image is going to have a digit okay and this data base is m n i s t m is database and they tried developing a machine learning based system which can recognize with a very high accuracy so uh, on this uh, around 1998 a approach that was actually using cnn convolution neural network was actually proposed at that particular time so you can think that lot of lot of advances uh, advancement has been done at that particular time but uh, let me tell you that what is the what was that particular scenario so i was telling you the, about the computers at this particular time what was the software that we had you know that windows have come and windows 98 was a software okay earlier windows 95 was a software then uh, uh, i think windows 2000 came and uh, windows then become windows xp and after that so many things has come so these were times when the software was so fragile that if you are going to save your things on your computer and next day you are going to open the computer so whatever kind of error can come and you are not sure that what is going to happen with you 
so the software support and the hardware support at that particular time was not that much great that they can do these many very complex and big kind of uh, things over that however this these concept were actually proposed but uh, hardware and software support was very less and therefore the many other people they remains to this particular domain only these people have actually solve that particular problem that's very good because they have managed to find out the hardware but other people they were not using that for them it was not able to they were not able to use that so this concept actually died very very interesting time came photo okay very interesting time came into this particular domain when the people have thought okay looks like that neural networks are again very bad idea they are not going to work however you see that very good thing has been proposed but even then people are thinking that okay now good things are not going to uh, are not coming so let me let me draw this thing to this point okay so people actually abandoned that they told that okay this this is gone the neural network is died and actually uh, when i was a student uh, i have also seen the very big professor saying this that uh, the neural network has died okay so neural network actually people thought that even with a very high uh, high level of uh, uh, very um, proposed models people were thinking that it has actually died they started working on the hand crafted method once again why as i told you the only reason was this that software and hardware support was not there they started working on the hand crafted method if i make something and for example shift s i f t shift was a um, for the computer vision community this was a kind of feature that uh, that works on the various um, uh, various resolution levels and then builds a feature and it was it was phenomenal so it has uh, it has done miracles means um, around 9 around 2004 this paper came around 2004 and it has dominated the area for very long around 2000 shift and surf shift uh, surf orb and these kind of features means hand crafted features all the hand crafted features were actually dominating into the area whenever you want to do any kind of uh, computer vision or uh, nlp task hand crafted vision hand crafted things has been uh, people were using from this to this time around 2012 people were actually they were forget about that whatever what is neural network nobody was talking about everybody was thinking that if you can come up with any kind of hand crafted specialized method they are good but the problem with the hand crafted method is this that uh, for a small database you can build the hand crafted method but when the database grows then this this method becomes uh, fragile it is most of the time it is not going to work so very difficult so in between something very interesting happened that around 2006 unsupervised pre training it was a paper that uh, actually talks about that uh, if you want to do a training you need not to supervise that what are the values over there so very interesting paper came and around 2010 again the new, using the neural this was this approach was actually proposed using neural networks and then and, uh, into the speech recognition this uh, uh, neural networks has done very good work because you know that the time has also been passed so people were able to use the better hardware so into the speech recognition neural network was able to produce the very good results okay state of the art results so very interesting kind of thing that actually Uh, introduced over here so but but it was not into that particular um, means um, it was not that much uh, shining at the particular time but but this was a good work that actually happened that actually promised that looks like that something is coming very good is coming then suddenly what happens that uh, there is a group that actually collected a lot of data on the internet and they have deployed uh, they have used the community services means everybody he have sent to the to the community and uh, from them they have done the uh, marking on those kind of images means from the internet they have collected lot of images on those images they have asked from the community that can you tell me that what is there into the images so very large database of the images has been created where the labels were also available that what is inside that those kind of images okay so that particular database is called as imagenet database okay imagenet database so on this imagenet database there was a challenge imagenet challenge means uh, this database was big so they have 
collected a subset of that database and uh, their 10,000 categories of the items were only there and they have thrown a challenge that can you can you solve can you solve a computer vision problem on this can you build a system that can recognize the things better so you know that at that time people were using the handcrafted methods so using handcrafted method the error on those kind on databases was 26 percent okay error was 26 percent suddenly very big thing happened in 2012 and this was alex kirjaski has actually proposed a model that is called LXNet, and uh, this has reduced the error from six, 26 percent to 16 percent on that particular area. So you should we would also discuss in, in sometime in, in more details into the into the later classes that earlier error, error was 28 percent. Okay, earlier error was higher. So using so people were uh, using the techniques. So from 28%, they were able to reduce to 26% in one year. And suddenly what happens from 26 to 16? It was a big break breakthrough. And let me tell you this thing, that he was not using anything new. He was using the similar kind of architecture, which was proposed around 1998. Same kind of architecture, very similar kind of architecture. Very similar, this convenient kind of architecture he was using at that particular time. Okay, so the people the thing that the people were telling that it has died actually again, uh, again, uh, the again got the power. And here, Alex, AlexNet has actually shown that the computer vision task can be done very effectively using the previous neural network based models. And the, again, the research is started. Next year, ZFNet. Uh, ZFNet was proposed that actually not a very different kind of thing. It, it has says that because LXNet has proposed his first time. So if I, if he may have done the right kind of parameter initialization, right kind of putting the things. So this value may not be the 16, it, it, it could be 12%. So they have shown another model where the accuracy was not, uh, where the error was not 16%, 12%. So it was a base on the same model on the LXNet. So they have shown that. Uh, using some kind of uh, changes with small, small, uh, better adjustment, they can get the 12% accuracy. So now you can compare from 26, it was possible to reduce to 12%, very big thing. Okay. Again, the neural network has started working and uh, big, big companies then started coming into this particular area, VGG. Okay, next year, VGG has was been proposed and now it has further re reduced the error to what? 7.3 percent okay from this 12 percent the error actually was reduced to 7.3 percent next year google linet again came that that is a six from 7.3 6.7 percent next year resnet microsoft resnet has come that has reduced the error to 3.6 percent you can see that interesting work 3.6 percent after that we need not to talk much because on this these databases we assume that five percent error person would also do the humans would also have the error of around five percent so it is excellent kind of thing so now you can see the first time that the person do error five percent on the five percent images person would also do error because you know that now if the images are taken into the uh, open domain then they can be of the any kind so some images may be taken into the into the wrong uh, lighting condition so those images would have the if you see those images, you will not be able to understand that what is there, but the machine is able to do because he, he can do some kind of contrast uh, enhancement and other things. So underlying technique can find out the differences. So after that, uh, very other way, uh, there are good architectures such as dense net, transformers, unit, uh, many other ar architecture has been proposed. And it is every day we are going to get good and good things on uh, all the all the areas. So this was a small introduction, brief history of the uh, neural networks. So you can, from this, you can infer that what happens that people started, people started from, uh, people started here, people started around this thing and people were thinking that a lot of things can be delivered. But after this, after this time, they were thinking that nothing is happening. Then again, when this uh, back propagation thing comes, it was up, but after that, even the, these kind of things have been approached, but people are thinking it is died. But after 2012, again, it has been up, and now we are into this particular scenario. I don't know that when this uh, dip would come, maybe this dip would not come this time, because 
now the things are being delivered by the deep learning okay so this dip may not come so maybe we can go we can take a flight at this particular time so we are studying these scores at the right time so any questions hope you understand very interesting story okay uh so let us i think i have spent too much time to explaining all these things i wanted to tell you this uh, something but let us try to see that how much i can do so i think things are which i technically contained that i have they are very simple so come with me so this is the perceptron model where you know that x is input and there are weights and then you are going to find out the summation apply a threshold if something is greater than this you say that it is greater than it, you output is one otherwise minus one or zero or one whatever you can wish you can give single perceptron can represent many boolean function boolean function means what when the output is zero one two two thing minus one plus one all these things are boolean function boolean function means two output is only output is two a single perceptron can represent many boolean function how come if i change the weights it is a different function okay if i change the weight it is a different line so sing, so it can represent many different boolean functions okay in fact any m of n function m of n function means if out of m inputs i need at least n number of things to be one if i make the function like this then all those function can be made like this let me tell you what do i mean by this let's assume m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 m is equal to 3 means what three inputs are there x1 x2 x3 three inputs are there okay so what could be the input 0001010011010011011011 these are the only possible inputs okay these are the only possible inputs if i say that i want the output to be one when there is n is equal to 2 at least two things are okay two or more things are one at that time i want the one so where would be one here no here it would be zero here it would be zero here it would be zero here it would be one because two or more i want here it would be zero here it would be one here it would be one here it would be one so if i can come i, I ask any this kind of function where i am going to tell this function is m of n function so i can always make this thing using a single perceptron Make sense. If uh, uh, I think I have written wrong, let me just correct it. Okay, in this setting, m was actually two. I wanted two items out of n is equal to three. Okay, just just a single thing. Okay, out of m thing I want out of the n thing. So this is not a different thing. You know that. that is not a big problem so in this particular setting if i say that uh, m is equal to 1 means at at least one item is there so it would be one at this these places it would be one on all the places so this is logically or gate you know that it is or gate if if there is any one then it is going to give you one if i say m is equal to n means for all the places when it is all the places it is going to be one then only it is going to be one so this is the scenario and this scenario is called the and gate you can see that various and and or gates you can also make using this okay so i i'm here i'm talking about the only single perceptron but if you as i told you earlier also that if you make a layer then you can you can build the any boolean function okay then you can build any boolean function we are not going to right now i'm not going to explain this uh, later slides it would be clear to you maybe in the into the next class it would be clear to you how so here is an example where i have some uh, x, uh, x x1 is x0 is equal to always 1 x1 and x2 is input weights is minus 30 plus 20 plus 20 and i want to find out that what is the output okay so if the input is 0 0 what is the output can you tell me because what is the equation so if why this if you write the equation it is going to be what minus 30 it is minus 30 plus 20x1 plus 20x2. So if the input is zero zero, what is the output? Minus 30, and the sign is negative, so output is zero. When zero one is the input, if it is zero, it is one. Then it is minus 30 plus 20. The answer is minus 10. Again, it is going to be zero. When uh, when one zero is input, again it is going to give me zero. 
okay because both the values are 20 when 1 1 is there then minus 30 plus 20 plus 20 it becomes positive plus 10 answer becomes plus 10 so you get 1 so you get 1 over here can you recognize this particular table this is and table okay logically and so this particular structure represent what logically and if w0 is equal to minus 10 then it, it becomes my logical r here you put minus 10 i give you homework that by yourself you try then it would be a r gate here 1 1 1 would be there if w0 is equal to 10 and w2 is equal to minus 20 with a single output with a single input then it gives a logically not gate what do i mean by this so you can make a not gate by putting what that w0 is equal to 10 here you put 10 and uh, here you put minus 20 and this is not there okay only one input is there so if you what is the equation equation is 10 minus 20x so you can see that when value of x is 0 then this is positive it output becomes 1 when the value is 1 then it becomes negative this quantity becomes negative the output is 0 so this is a not gate you can think that and you can make and you can make r you can make large not okay however you cannot make xr by this uh, but as i told you that if you make multiple layers then you can do it but right now only using single you cannot make it so and or not you can make so let me tell you from the complexity theory you may have heard that any problem any problem that is there you can represent is three set okay you can represent a reduced to three set because any problem can be reduced to something and then you can reduce that to the three set problem three set is a circuit circuit satisfiability problem so therefore definitely you can find out a circuit for that thing and that circuit you can make using this okay so any boolean function or if for a, to solve any particular problem you can build a neural network circuit a very high level idea okay all right so uh, essentially when you have uh, when you have a neural network it means that it is going to represent an equation it means that it is going to represent as a line and therefore one side things are positive and other things and and the side the things are negative let me give an ex 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 uh, question that can you design a perceptron for this particular table 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 how can you design this let me let me assume that this is the design where w0 w1 w2 is there i have to find out these values for this particular condition what is the condition it is uh, w0 plus w1 multiplied by 0 let's assume what is the equation w0 plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2 this is this should be positive or negative so when the value is 0 0 means what this is 0 this is also 0 i have put 0 and 0 over here this value should be less than 0 this is the condition okay so uh, what should i take the, what should value of what should be the value of w0 that i should take i can take because w0 plus w1 this uh, because these w x1 and x2 are zero so i can take w0 is equal to safely take minus one because it should be less than zero what is the second condition second condition zero one when this value becomes one okay so equation becomes w0 plus w2 x2 is less than zero because i need the zero at this particular place this value is i have already chosen minus one what should be the value of w0 this big this is one what should be i choose the value of w2 i can choose again w2 is equal to because they need to be less than zero i can choose w1 is equal to what minus one make sense go to the th go to the next equation next equation one zero one zero pay one zero one so i put one over here and i put zero over here equation become w0 plus w1 and plus zero less than zero i think it should be greater than zero because that then only it would be positive now it is greater than zero what should be uh, the value of w1 i can take w1 is it i think i have done the wrong thing at that particular time w2 is equal to minus one okay so this this value what is this value you are not telling me okay so are you listening everything okay if I do a mistake, you have to tell, okay? Because the calculation you have to follow with me. Once again, okay, let me tell you. W0 plus W1, what is the value of W0 plus W1? It should be greater than 0. W0 is equal to minus 1. What should be? I would take the value of 
W1, I can take the W1 is equal to 1.5. No problem. It becomes positive. What is the third equation? The third equation is that's 1, 1, 1, 1 should be at the 1, 1, it should be 0. Okay, at the 1, 1, it should be 0. Means what? That W0 plus W1, X1 plus W2, X2 is less than 0. This is minus 1. This is uh, the W1 is equal to 1.5. And this value is actually 1. This value is 1. So it becomes, and this uh, W2 is equal to plus 1. So if I add it, I think W2 is equal to minus 1. Okay. So if I add it, it comes minus 0 0.5. So I'm okay. So this, this formula is also satisfied. So the same thing has been explained on these slides that you can apply and you can find out that what is the value of these parameters. Please note, if I, if I put minus 2, minus 2, and 3, they are also going to work minus 1, minus 1, 1.45, they are also going to work. So multiple values are there which can work, okay? So infinite such solutions are there. You need any one of them. Let me ask another question. Can you build a network of the things, two-layer things? So you can think that uh, this, uh, this output can be represented using this particular formula that I say that x1 and x2 minus. How many of you would agree this? That I can, if I, okay, x with the x1 and x2, if I find out x1 and x2 bar, if I find out this particular quantity, x2 bar, then this particular quantity, uh, this particular quantity is going to give me the same circuit. Okay. So if you, if you did, this is a truth table you can verify. If you understand this, so I need x1 and x2 bar and then i have to apply and so at the end i put a and and thing let's assume that i put and one how the and one was there few minutes back we have seen that minus 30 20 and 20 give me and but with this 20 what value should be there x2 bar how can find out the x2 bar over here i say that x with the x2 i put minus 20 and 10 and uh, put zero over here so that nothing goes into this particular slide side so i get uh, x2 bar over here what do i mean by this that i get this was x2 this was x2 i got x2 bar over here and then i have combined x2 bar and uh, x1 using and gate at this particular location so what is the output the same output however this arrangement is mostly avoided if you want to make this kind of thing i just wanted to put this in front of you that in this way also you can build a net network multiple layer things but however, this circuit is mostly avoided. We have seen that this is a better representation. So because you find out the values and now you, single thing is better. This thing is mostly avoided because when you do a cross connection kind of thing, it is it becomes very difficult to train. Okay, the general method that we have actually till now we have developed to find out the actual parameter, they becomes very difficult to be find out when the connection is from one layer to another. If the connection to the next layer only, then we it is easy direct methods are there we can apply them otherwise here training becomes challenging so that's all for today thank you very much for the